Hello and welcome back. Today I want to continue talking about simulation softwares and filters by looking at a program which, among other things, can be used in the design of both lumped element as well as distributed element filters. What I'm talking about is Cukes Studio. So if you're curious, then keep watching. So to start things off, Cukes stands for Quite Universal Circuit Simulator and this free simulation software can be downloaded from their website from the Downloads tab. Now, Cuke Studio is a version of the base Cuke software, so there are multiple versions with related features out there, but for today, I'll be using the standard Cuke Studio. After installation and running the program, you are greeted with this fairly basic interface. Now, if you want to learn more about what the program can do, you can quickly look into the help index over the various functions it contains, or you can also check the technical documentation that is provided, which is a quite substantial document going into the various details of the program. So not just the features, but also the mathematics behind it. So this program can do all of the things that you expect from an electronic circuit simulator. I will not be going into too many details today since there is too much to cover. So even though this program is free, it's not a toy, but rather a very complex tool. There are various tutorials out there that cover this, and if you're interested, I might start a small series too. Just let me know. Regardless, there is however a very specific feature which I wish to cover today. So under the Tools tab, you have the Filter Synthesis tool. So this is an application that can calculate both lumped element filters, so things like the LC ladder, coupled LC resonators, and well, active filters, but it also presents the possibility of calculating distributed element filters. So things like end coupled transmission lines, lateral coupled transmission lines, stepped impedance, and stub transmission line filters. So first thing to determine is the exact filter construction, filter type, and class. In some cases you can select any sort of class, so you have the possibility of low pass, high pass, band pass, band stop, and even a diplexer and triplexer option. So all of these are possible for the LC ladder type of filter, the active filter, the equation defined filter, and to some extent the stub transmission line filter. But for all of the other types of filter, the construction will limit the exact response class. For example, the coupled LC resonator and coupled transmission lines and lateral coupled transmission line filters are all band pass type. And while the stepped impedance filter is of low pass type only. Anyway, once you decide on these three settings, you need to select the exact filter order, corner frequency for high and low pass filters, or the start and stop frequency for the band pass or the band stop filters. Based on the exact filter type, so again here you have multiple options, but for some of these, like the Chebyshev filter, you will also have a band pass ripple that you need to define. And finally, the connecting impedances need to be defined. So with this calculator, the same impedance is considered for both input and output. Finally, you need to choose the topology, either of pi or t type. So this refers to the high or low impedance first, which is seen from the outside. But anyway, first, let's just take a first example using these settings. So once everything has been defined, we need to hit calculate and put into clipboard. And if there are no errors during generation, we get this successful result. And now we can go back to the program screen and just hit paste. So the first thing to observe is that the tool will generate a complete circuit with signal source and load and the simulation type is S parameter. The exact simulation setup can either be left with the default values. So right now it goes from 100 megahertz up to 12 gigahertz and 500 points are being simulated and the scale will be logarithmic. We can change any of these by double clicking on the as parameter simulation block, and here all of these parameters appear as input fields. So once everything is done, we can go to simulation and simulate, or just hit the hotkey of F2, and the default output of the as parameter simulation is highlighted, so we get both a graph in the frequency domain, as well as a Smith chart. Now we can edit any of these graphs by double clicking them. So one of the basic things that I like to do with my frequency graphs is just go to the properties and select logarithmic x-axis graph. 
So this sets my frequency to be on the logarithmic scale. Now, if you don't like the positions, you can drag the graphs, move them around. You can also delete them. So by hitting the delete key, and you can also add new graphs from the components diagrams tab. So if you accidentally deleted something that you still wanted, this can always be fixed. So you can select any of these and just put them back into the graph. Now, when you do this, you will of course need to select what it is that you want to plot out, hitting OK, and then your graph is back on the table. Now, another important feature to keep in mind is the possibility to add markers to your graphs. So under insert, we have the set marker on graph option or the shortcut control B, and you can use this to select the graph and mark various points on it. Once these points are marked, you can pull around the description or the point. So to put it to the exact desired point on the graph that you're interested in. So this should help in better analyzing the results that you've gotten. Now, if we move back to the filter synthesis tool and we wish to generate a new filter, let's say a transmission line filter this time. So I will just select the stub transmission line and I will keep the same properties as before. But now we have an extra set of settings to play around with. So the program can either work with transmission lines defined based on their characteristic impedance and propagation delay. So for this, we just need to fix the available impedance extremes. Or if we select use microstrip lines, we can define the substrate's relative permittivity, its height, the metal thickness, and the minimum and maximum trace width that we can work with. So the first set is a more academic expression of transmission lines, whereas the second option will be the practical implementation based on the available PCB properties. So let's just leave all of these values, recalculate, look at the successful calculation result, and then go back to our schematic and paste our new circuit in. So with this filter, we have all of our traces defined as having a certain width and a certain length. And if we double click on any of them, we can see that all of these are associated with the substrate one substrate, which was automatically defined. So we have it here, and this contains the properties that we've defined in our previous window. Now we can of course double click on this substrate to change it. So if we want to edit any of its parameters, but if we do this, our filter will not be recalculated. So changing the substrate will not change the filter. Now, if we try to run the simulation as is, we get a nice error appearing. So right now we have more than one simulation defined. So we have both the first S parameter simulation as well as the second one defined at the same time. So this is not really allowed. But if I delete the second one, the simulation now runs. So no more errors appeared, but we are not really seeing any new results appearing, even though these have been calculated. So one way to fix this is to go back to the components diagrams tab and add a Cartesian diagram. So in this, we wish to make something similar to the first graph. So to plot the two S parameters for the second circuit. Now, since this time the ports are named port three and port four, we will need to plot out the S33 diagram. So this is the equivalent to the S11 from the first schematic and the S43 plot. So if we do this and we also set our graph to be logarithmic, we are getting something quite similar to our first graph. So this way we can see the main difference between the lumped element filter and the distributed element filter where we are getting the multiple resonances appearing. Now, one observation that you might have seen is that one graph is expressing S parameters on a linear scale, the other on a decibel scale. So if we want to change the exact plotted quantity, we again need to double click on the graph, select the plots that are of interest and just edit the exact plotted quantity. So the syntax that we need is DB with a capital B and a set of parentheses. And well, the same thing applies to the second graph as well. And when we do this, we are getting the exact same type of graph in both of our simulations. So in a very basic nutshell, these are some of the things that can be done with Qq Studio 
and the filter tool. Now, if you don't like the results from the filter tool, you can of course draw out your own filter designs and analyze them in the exact same way. Now, this all seems very nice. And well, it is. But of all the features that I saw on Cube Studio, one in particular stood out to me. The capability of simulating not just generic transmission line elements defined by impedance and propagation delay, but also transmission line elements defined by their exact geometry. This is not something commonly found in free tools. So this section of the simulator's capabilities is described in the help file under the electromagnetic field simulations tab. So here they go into various details and to try out this feature under the components transmission line section, you have quite a few options to play with. So you have both microstrip structures, so constructions present on the surface of the PCB, as well as buried structures, so strip lines. And you also have a set of very important features. So you have things like T and cross multipoint sections, so the transition from one line to another is not direct, but rather through such intersections. And while you also have radial and rectangular stubs, so multiple geometries can be played around with. And even the end sections can either be open or shorted to ground. And each of these has their own dedicated model. Now, there are quite a lot of structures here to go through. And while using these will allow to have a simulation model that is quite a good representation of the final real thing. Now, one final related topic to mention here is the possibility to observe the transmission line structure, not just as a schematic, but also as a layout file. So for this, I created an example with the filter generator. So this is just a basic transmission line filter. And if we simulate it, the result is, well, as expected. But what the filter tool didn't really take into consideration are the various junctions in between the transmission lines. And this will have an impact on the realism of the final design. So if we check the layout of this circuit by going under tools, create PCB layout, we can see that the transmission line stubs are almost halfway overlapped with the series traces. So this is not really a realistic design. Our stub is actually beginning from a different point than is present in the simulation. So if you would be removing all of these overlaps and creating a clean new layout, the result would be different. So this is just something to keep in mind. And this is a point in which the T or cross sections would come in quite handy. So the big question regarding all of these features, especially the electromagnetic simulator related stuff is, is the simulator actually good? I mean, most electromagnetic simulators on the market that offer this sort of possibilities are not really cheap. Thousands of dollars a year, not really cheap. So just how good can a community made free simulator actually be? For this, I devised a rather simple, but still hopefully interesting experiment. A board with a set of free stubs using different geometries. So I have a thin stub, a wide stub, and a radial stub. All with the same lengths, but with different widths. I measured the exact dimensions of these, as well as the substrate thickness. And then I created an equivalent model in this simulator. And to compare the simulation to something, I will be also measuring this board using a light VNA. And I will be measuring the signal that passes through these using a set of SMA connectors. Now in the simulator, I created a circuit with all three of these stubs. And I also modeled the interconnecting lines as well as the exact intersection geometries, and well the end pieces for the straight stubs. Now, the measurement is set to have a single 50 ohm signal source and a single 50 ohm load, and as a result, I plotted out the amplitudes present at the output of the circuits on a decibel scale. So this is an AC type of simulation, it's not an S-parameter simulation as we've seen before, so different simulation types can be created by taking them from the components simulations tab. And well, anyway, if we look at the result, the simulation predicts the following response shapes and the various maximum attenuation frequencies. So the widest trace in pink should have a stronger attenuation, 
but at a higher frequency than the narrow stub, and while the radial stub in red should be at almost half the frequency compared to all of the other ones. Now, before measuring this, I had no clue what the response should actually be like, but my gut feeling was that this doesn't really look right. These are quite all over the place and with very large variations in between them. However, after I did perform the measurements and plotted them out on the same type of graph settings, so the same frequency range, I was actually astonished with the result. I mean, the various notch frequencies are almost identical to the ones predicted by the simulation, and while the various shapes are also spot on. I mean, for a handmade PCB, you can't really ask for anything better. So yeah, for me at least, this is very convincing evidence that the Cube Studio electromagnetic simulator can produce very reliable results when it is used correctly, so when the model is an accurate representation of the real life device. In the end, Cube Studio, with the various tools included into it, is a very powerful circuit simulator. Some might say it's quite universal. But anyway, it does offer features which are not normally available to the average amateur, specifically the electromagnetic simulation related features. So this is a tool to keep in mind when working in the gigahertz range, but not only. And with that said, hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, there are more similar videos on my channel that you might want to check out. And if you want to be up to date with my latest releases, also consider subscribing. See you next time. Bye bye.